Hey guys, so last time I made a video about Sabix agent. It was how to install it easily with PowerShell. Um, I created a pretty simple script on installing an agent on a Windows machine. And uh, it does nothing else but install the agent. And I kind of needed a script or some way how to update all my agents as well. So I don't have to do this manually. And maintaining my scripts and my configuration files etc and the way i do this is i do it from github so i created a repository in github this is just for testing and showing you guys um, with the agent configuration file and user parameters and metadata and i made some powershell scripts to show the agent version uh, in sapix and i'm I'm basically using GitHub to maintain all my configuration files. So in case someone manipulates the files or deletes the files in the Windows machine, I always have GitHub to come back to and compare the files. So in case they've been manipulated, uh, it will correct it uh, automatically in the PowerShell script. And I'm gonna show you how. So in the new script I made, it's much longer and more complicated and it took a while to get everything to work properly and all the logic and stuff so there's probably an easy way to do this but uh, I don't have anything fancy uh, software or anything so I made this in PowerShell so the first I'm gonna show you a thing so the first thing is that you have to link to the agent uh, this is from the Sapix website and we have to create a token in github we'll do this, do this later this is for your github repository um, this is my repository name, YouTube test. That's what you type in there. And then the preferred uh, agent version. And this is uh, used for some logic. So it has to be the same as the one you're downloading. And then required PowerShell version five. The reason why it's five is from server 2012 R2 and up. It's uh, basically standard PowerShell five. And from 2012 and down, it's PowerShell 4 and below. So yeah. And then I have a counter, which I'm using in, I'm using later in some logic as well. Uh, I will show you, of course. So the first thing it does is it, it checks what version of PowerShell your server has or your Windows machine, and it compares it to the required version. So if it's less than five, it will not run. It has to be at least five. And uh, it will just exit. So yeah then <clears throat> in it we have a function i split everything up in functions we have a function called sapix backup which basically just takes a backup of your sapix uh, installation and the sapix folder uh, in case you uninstall it or it, if it un uninstalls then we'll back uh, back your files up then for the installation part <clears throat> first it will just create a sapix folder it will then download the the version that you put up in the up here so in this case it's 4.4.6 let's go down again it will then move the agent because it's inside a folder called bin i don't want that i want it in the root then it will remove the standard agent configuration files because i will download mine from github i have a standard version i created with all um like my which server or proxy i'm I want to connect to etc so i don't have to change that all the time that's just one file in my uh, github repository which i'm downloading and putting in so yeah um <clears throat> so here i'm downloading the files from github there's probably an easy way to do this if uh, anybody knows let me know <laughs> uh, it basically downloads the agent windows file right here and then it places it in the Sapix folder. And it does this with the metadata and the user parameters as well. And the agent user parameters configuration file. And I have some PowerShell scripts as well, which shows the configuration version of everything. I will show you, of course. And the show agent version as well. I like to be able to see what version I, I run in my Sapix installation. So you can put this in. Then it will start the agent and it will inst install it and create the firewall, firewall rule as well. So that's the inst installation part. I will, of course, show everything. 
it's probably going to be a long video. Then I have a function called uninstall, which just uninstalls everything. Then this was the most tricky part, which I'm calling maintain. And what it does is inside GitHub, in my uh, agent version files, or in my agent uh, files, configuration files, I have this version number called 1.0. And what the maintain part of the script does is it um, downloads the file and it compares the first line. And if there's a difference, it uh, thinks that it has either been manip manipulated or updated. Uh, that's not really much to it. But let's say you change the version to 1.1 and you updated something inside your configuration file and then the scripts downloads the new file, the new configuration file, compares it, it sees, okay, there's a new version, then it will replace it uh, with the new one. <clears throat> I will show you the thing. And it does this with all the files. Not every time, but uh, yeah, I will show you. So after it has compared the files, uh, you can see there's a counter here. This is what the counter is used for. So if there's a difference and it sees, okay, uh, one file has been changed, then for that to, to work, it has to restart the agent. But if there's no files changed, there's no reason to restart the agent. It will just be waste of resources and time, etc. So if there's a difference, it will count one, uh, plus one for the, uh, f yeah, I forgot the name of this, and then it will restart the agent um, down here. This is basically where all the logic happens. It just checks if uh, the Sabix even exists. And if it exists, it will get the version, like um, the current version of the agent we have installed. And then if the current version is equal to the newest agent version we stated, it will just run the maintain part. So there's no reason to update the, or change the agent on the machine. It will just run through all the configuration files and see if there's been updated anything. Uh, if it's not the same version, it will detect that it's not the same and it will run first, it will back up your files, then it will just uninstall the agent and run the installation again. Or if no agent is detected, it will just install the Sabix um, agent on the Windows machine. It's probably a bit confusing, but uh, let's try and run this. So first we have to go to GitHub and we go into up here and go to settings, developer settings, go to personal access tokens. I will generate one just for because of this video. I will call it YouTube test. Then I will put it right here. This is my token. So let's copy this into PowerShell and then try and run this. So right now I don't have any agent installed on my machine. So it will detect that. Let's see here if we can find it. Uh, detected that agent version. Uh, okay, stop. Detected that agent is not installed on the Windows, Windows machine and now it will, it will install the agent that I put in. So you can see here it installed and it has started. So let's check the services. Okay, came here and see the agent is now running. So we can go in here to, let's uh, go into my Sabix folder. You can see it's version 4.4.6. It's fine, that's the newest one. Then we go to the agent right here, open it up. You can see it's version 1.0. And I just typed in it's maintained in GitHub. That's because I only change uh, this configura configuration file in GitHub. So every time the script, script runs, it will automatically update this uh, configuration file. 
and I have typed in beforehand the server IP and the server IP for active checks. All this uh, exists in GitHub, and I only changed this in GitHub. And I have made some scripts which shows the agent version. It will get the agent version in PowerShell, and you can see it in Sapix uh, dashboard and in items, which is really nice. So you can see if you have any outdated uh, Sapix uh, agents in your environment. And this is uh, just shows the configuration versions, so you can keep a track of that, which is also really nice, I think. Okay, so this only showed the the first part, the installation part of uh, the script. Let's try and change something. Um, we go into my repository. Let's try and change something in the Windows configuration, uh, the agent uh, configuration file. I'm not going to change this in my uh, studio code. I'm just going to change it directly in GitHub. So let's say I change this to version 1.1 and we got a new proxy server, which is another IP. Uh, it doesn't exist on my network, but uh, it's okay. Then we type in updated proxy address and commit this. So I changed it in GitHub and then let's say this script is running every week or every day or every night, doesn't really matter, that's up to you. Then it runs again. It will detect that the agent version is the same, so there's no reason to run this part and it will only update the configuration file. Down here it says one file has been updated. That's the one we just uh, changed. And then it has, um, it's restarted the agent. Okay, so let's go into the folder and check the configuration file. Now you can see it's version 1.1 and the IP address has changed to the new proxy address, which is nice. So that's, this part works. We can also change the agent really easily. We can go to, let's try and go to zabbix.com and we find another agent we want. It could be there's, there's a bug or something in this uh, agent, I don't know. So let's say we want 4.4.4 .4 for some reason, I don't know. Copy the URL to the agent. Then I'll change it in here. We change the URL and we change the newest uh, agent version and then we run this part instead. So what this does is it detects there's a difference between the one you have installed and the one that you want in the script and it will remove the current one and install the new one that you want. Okay, so let's scroll up here and see. It detects that the agent version is not the same it will update to the newest. Okay, this is not the newest, but it will update to the one that you prefer. So we go back into the Zapix folder, and then we check the version, and now it's 4.4.4. So let's say now they have fixed the bug, and you want back to 4.4.6, could also be, by then it's called 4.4.7 or something. Then we go back into the scripts right here, change this part, change it to 4.4.6, and then we run this script again. So we go back into the Sapix folder, look at the agent version, and now it's 4.4.6. It makes it really easy to install, uninstall, maintain, maintain all the files. You can see it also created the backup folder for every time it uninstalled. So in case you did something you didn't you actually wanted to save this, then it created a backup folder. <clears throat> so my next problem was that this is a really long script and you really have to keep a track on this if let's say you have 100 Windows servers or something then it can be really, really difficult to have the script everywhere. And let's say you want to change something in the script to make it different, and then you have to go and change it on 100 servers or 1,000 servers or whatever. Could be many servers. So I got another script. 
to actually execute the script. This is a really, really simple one. Uh, okay, I'm just going to copy my token. Put my token here. So what this script does is it downloads this script. This script will also be maintained in GitHub. And then this script will be the one that you run on all your servers, at least I do. Could be uh, with schedule task scheduler, and then it runs every night. So it, uh, it downloads this script. So you only have to maintain this in GitHub as well. And this one will be the one that's running. It does nothing but run another script. So let's try and run this one. See, I hope it works. Probably doesn't work. Okay, I figured it out. I uh, linked to the wrong script. So now it works. So you can see here, this one will download the other PowerShell script, which is the one we just I just showed you. And this one will be the one that run on the Windows machines. And then it will run all this logic. So if the agent is not installed, it will install the agent. If the agent is installed, and there's a newer version that you defined in the script right here. And with this one, it will update the version of the agent. And if the agent is also the same, it will download the files from your GitHub repository, compare them with the ones you currently have on your Windows machine. And then it will see if there's a newer version. If there's a newer version, it will update it. And if there's not, it will just skip. So. We can try again and let's go into my GitHub repository and change the agent file back again to the correct one that I have. It's going to be 12 and 12 again. Commit. Then I'm going to run the small one. And you can see now it has detected that one file has been updated. Let's go and check it out. And the version is now 1.0 again, as it was in the beginning. So yeah, I hope this makes sense. And if you have any questions, you're of course welcome to leave a comment. And uh, have a good night. Bye.